good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, you're amazing, and you're still laughing and applauding. Aren't you tired? Would you like to get up for one minute and just shake a little bit? Please just stand up for a minute. Not a minute, just a moment. And just shake a little bit and turn a little bit to the one side and turn a little bit to the other side. And then while you're up, why don't you just take, if your hands are empty and free, why don't you just take a deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Please do this with me. Deep breath. I'm old. If I say something, it's not a suggestion. It's an instruction. Take a deep breath and breathe out and give yourself a hug. Give yourself a hug. Thank you for investing in your child's future today, ladies and gentlemen. Please sit down. So, we're going to talk about slowing down, um, because fast isn't better and more isn't, isn't more intelligent either. So I quickly want to just tie in with the previous speaker, what an awesome dad. Ladies, do you think we can buy some of those somewhere? <laughs> well, you know, quickly just want to share something very personal. Um, when I was nine years old, my dad said, do you want to drive a car one day? And I said, yes. And he said, well, then you need to know how, to, how it works. So he bought me an overall, but I've always been a woman of substance. So at the age of nine, we bought two piece, and we had to buy one by the time it fitted. You know, we had to do this and this and this. But my dad taught me about cars. And my daughter said to me the other day, do you realize that that time that you spent with your dad working on a car, now I really can work on a car, um, shaped your entire thought process for the rest of your life. Because I'm a neuroscientist, and I work in education, and my thing is, what makes a child learn and what prevents a child from learning? Because I'm a nursery school teacher by profession, really. And as a nursery school um, teacher, I, I was always amazed. It didn't matter how hard we work. Certain children, we could get school ready, and some of the children just didn't get school ready. We, could, we did what we wanted to do. We, we really tried hard, and we couldn't. And it bugged me because I felt I was failing the parents. You pay a lot of money, you bring a child to us, and we couldn't get that child to school ready. So I started asking the question, the car question. What makes it work? What makes this thing work? And the clue, first clue was, you, if you take a child to a therapist, may this never happen. But if you do, one of the first questions, how was pregnancy, how was birth, did your baby crawl? When? Make notes. Okay, how was pregnancy, how was birth, did your child meet all the um, milestones, did your child crawl and when? And I always wanted to know why, why did they ask those specific questions, what has that got to do with this? Or what does that have to do with this, because that's past and this is present, that f that's future. And it really took me the best part of 30 years to figure out that the baby milestones are probably one of the most underrated things on earth. Because every baby milestone is actually an indicator. It's a baby's way of giving, I think maybe it's even God's way of giving back to all the time and effort you put into your little ones. Because the moment, yes, it's the smile. Those of you who are new parents, isn't the smile, that first smile, the most amazing thing on earth? Those of you who are pregnant, you will see the moment they recognize you and all of the lights go on, there is nothing on this earth. I am addicted. I am addicted to that giving it all. So, but not just from my own children, from your children as well. Now, I love, absolutely love children. I'm okay with parents, but I absolutely love children. You see, the thing, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> we tend to, I'm sorry for that, we tend to think, I need to do so much more. No, sometimes we just need to get out of the way. Liz, thank you so much for that amazing um, talk earlier on about just, what was it, surf and? Oh, it was absolutely brilliant. If that's all you take away from today, you take a lot. Because that's really what life is about, is to understand that I have to do less. La Dad, you're gonna love me. I'm gonna save you a lot of money. We don't have to buy so much stuff. A child needs to be able to learn about the life that that child is living. We've been very fortunate in working on, on um, projects in um, the informal settlements. And I, because I am adamant, I love, 
I love my country, and I have a tremendous passion for disadvantaged children. And we walked around with a camera crew in disadvantaged areas, informal settlements, because I was adamant that we would be able to find good parenting anywhere, and we did. I didn't bring any footage of that. But good parenting is something that comes from inside. It's not something you buy, it's not something you learn, it's something you unlearn. And that means slow down. Slow down. More is not better. So, when we talk about milestones, every milestone in the olden days, there were these little um, cement things along the side of the road. So, if you're traveling, it was going to say um, 150 kilometers to Tausrafir, but you're now on kilometer number seven of 100. Do you know that stuff? Now, that's a milestone. A milestone is not something that's, that's cast in cement. Those were, but baby milestones aren't. A milestone is something that shows you that your baby is progressing. That's all that's important. How fast? How quick? Well, rather later than sooner. Why on earth? Because every milestone, every baby milestone is associated with brain development. So if a baby reaches a milestone sooner, what does that mean in terms of the quality of brain development? It's less. So we don't want sooner. We want each milestone to be reached when the baby is ready for that. And you need to take into consideration, was your baby born prime? What was conditions in the first couple of weeks after birth? But, but let's go through each of the milestones um, sequentially. So when that baby is born, ladies and gentlemen, babies have two exits, Northgate, Southgate. I'm from Joburg. Luckily, we don't have East and West Gate as well. That would complicate manners. But so a baby can exit through Northgate or baby can exit through Southgate. When baby exits through Southgate, it is the most amazing thing. You know, ladies, people talk about contractions. Have you heard that word? There is no such thing as a contraction. There's a thing called a hug. <laughs> so, ladies, what, is, what are they called? They're called? Uh, no, way you do have to do it with hugs. Okay, because it's traumatic for a baby to be born. It's traumatic for the parent, but it's definitely traumatic for the baby as well. Nature knows that. So nature says, let's give the mom's body the ability to hug the baby en route out. And what is the most amazing thing, if you've watched these DVDs, of natural birth, what pops out first? Normally the head, the chin. No, 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 the crown. And do you know what is so amazing? As that baby moves down the birth canal, the contractions around the crown of the head stimulates the sucking reflex. The contractions around the crown of the head stimulates the sucking reflex. So if a baby is born through North Gate, oh, what did the baby miss out on? Hugs and contractions around the crown of the head. So what must we do? Simulate. Because when you simulate contractions around the crown of the head and you massage your baby, sorry, the baby catches up and there is absolutely no problem. Because your next milestone, so the first milestone is always feeding. We don't want to battle with feeding. In a half a second, my, my second child, when he was born, I didn't realize how important each of the milestones were. And I didn't realize... <coughs> I really didn't realize that it was so important that they feed properly. And I didn't know there was a link between feeding and speaking later. There's a link between feeding and speaking. Take a child with a speech therapist. They always teach, they always ask you about feeding. And they teach them to suck and to, um, and to blow. Why? Because that develops the whole speech. So when my second child was born and he had a traumatic, traumatic birth, um, he really battled with, with feeding. And when he was two years old and he r didn't speak well, I didn't connect the two. But you know, you sometimes get help from the most unexpected sources. So when he was 16 years old, he was on the autistic spectrum. So when he was 16 years old, he met this girl with the blonde and the long legs, and she did extensive mouth therapy. And he caught up. <laughs> so he now speaks beautifully. And she's my daughter-in-law. Forever grateful. So, the second milestone, the very first milestone is feeding, it's sucking. The second milestone is to develop a strong neck. Lizzie's slides showed the most beautiful um, pictures of babies on tummy time. So many people say, no, 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 it's, it's similar to child abuse. It's not. It's incredibly important that a baby rests on mom or dad's chest. It's the best landing pad for any head because the head's heavy. Do you know if, if you ladies, those of you who weigh 60 kil kilograms, I don't know who does, but those people, <laughs> do you know that a baby's head weighs approximately 25% of body weight? So if you weigh 60 and you take 50, a quarter of that is 15 kilograms, and you put it in your head. 
what will happen to your neck? It will flop as well. So when a baby is born, a baby's neck is very, very unstable because the head is so huge. Okay, so tummy time is wonderful because it teaches that baby to move its head in different directions. Because if there's not a stable head, the rest of the body can't follow. Then the rest of the development can't follow. And as you hold the baby, did you know that as you hold the baby on the one hand, that's why we've got two of these ladies, um, you feed on the one side and you swap and you feed on the other side, you're actually stimulating the development of the opposite side of the brain. Brain development occurs not just through the milk, but through what you are doing while that baby is in your arms. The, as that baby feeds, you would automatically play with the hand and the le leg that's up this side. When you swap to the other side, you do the same. And you do the same when it's a body f bottle fed baby as well. As long as we swap sides, because it develops head control. The next milestone is rolling over. Because once the neck is nice and stable, you need nice, strong core. Why? So you can, a, a baby, your baby will be able to sit still and straight. I'm sure you've heard a lot about the attention deficit and the hyperactive disorder and things like that. You have? We want to prevent that from ever happening. And how do you do that? By developing a very strong neck and very strong core. So when your baby is ready, your baby is going to sit up unsupported. That's don't buy the supporting stuff. I, I can't say the names. Don't buy stuff that supports a baby to sit. Develop the muscles necessary for the, that enables that baby to sit. Don't put that baby in a thing that makes the baby walk when the baby hasn't crawled yet. You can see the thing is, when they sit, the moment they sit up, they start reaching because their eyes are developing so much better. It's weird, but your, your eyes need a very stable base before the eyes can work optimally. You know that? I can tell you stories about that. But I'm running out of time, so I'm going to race on a little bit. You see, once a baby has, has sat still and straight for long enough for the eyes to catch up, because at first the baby needs a body map, contractions work with this, hugs work with that, massage helps the baby to develop a body map, current location, think GPS. As the baby sits up and the baby's eyes start realizing what's going on around, that, uh, around them, your baby develops an environmental map. And when that baby starts crawling, you'll always notice the baby goes on all fours and then they move backwards before they move forward. They rock, 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 but they always move back. Backwards before they move forward. Why? It's human nature. Did you know that the first human response is always instinctively one of withdrawal, not one of attack? So your baby will often move backwards. There's nothing wrong with the brain. It's a superb brain because that baby is learning to withdraw before that baby is sometimes you have to retreat to advance. Okay, so your baby, when, when that baby sits up and the eyes are developing a wonderful environmental map and it starts interfacing with the current location, what's going to happen? The baby's going to find its destination. So crawling, so often when that baby starts pushing up in a crawled position, they moan. They moan. They let you know, this is not like it. This is hard work for me. But that's not the moment to pick them up. Because it's between moaning and picking up that brain development actually occurs. I'm not talking about a baby that's really, really upset. Moaning is a good thing. Can you hear some of the moans? They're saying, please pay attention to me. It's wonderful they're communicating. So crawling is an incredibly complicated, complex um, process that's associated with that in the brain. So when a baby starts crawling, it's equal to a master's degree cum laude. I tell you, the complexity level is phenomenal. And when that baby has crawled for long enough, the, the baby will interact more with the environment, naturally start pulling up, and then cruising sideways to stimulate the stabilizers to help that baby to stay up, and then they take their first walk. Do you know that on average, only 60% of babies walk on their first birthday? What's the rush? So many times people say, my baby walked at nine months. It's not faster, it's not better, because it's less repetition, because repetition builds pathways in the brain. You see, we want to applaud the baby that goes fast because we think it's, it, it's an indicator of um, more intelligence. It's absolutely not. 
When that baby repeats the same thing over and over and you wonder, are they ever going to progress to something else? It's exactly in those moments of repetition that brain wiring is really set down. And it's similar to the roots of a tree. So if you plant a tree and the roots are very shallow and the Cape Townian winds come along, what, what happens? It will uproot. But what happens if there is a very strong root system similar to very strong brain structures? If there's pressure, if there's challenge, what happens? they can stand. So hot housing your baby, not a good idea. What does that mean? Don't buy more. Don't show more. Listen to what Liz said. Watch more. Observe more. Make those moments, typical moments of dressing, feeding, changing, bathing, those moments, Andrea Comperelli calls it developmental dates. Those moments, repetitive moments through your day, just slow down, breathe, breathe in your child because you are a superb parent. And in connecting with your child, your baby, in time your toddler and your child, know what you smelt like today. If you've been close enough for long enough, so you, your baby knows what you've smelt like today, you've built a better brain. Thank you very much.